From Ball State University to the Ball Memorial Hospital, the Muncie of today remains indelibly tied to the history of the Ball Corporation and their famous jars. It's a story that begins in 1880, not in Indiana, but Buffalo, New York, with five brothers and one big dream. The Ball brothers looked for a business that they could do together. Um, their mother told them always to stick together and they listened to her and they did. They tried everything from making fish traps to cleaning carpets. Neither of those worked too well. But then they started making wood jacketed kerosene cans. That took off. The tin, after a while, corrodes. And so they started using glass for the interiors of these cans. By 1884, the Ball Brothers Glass Manufacturing Company was in full swing. To maximize factory production, the brothers expanded into other glass products, including their first glass fruit jars, the product that would eventually make Ball a household name. With glass, you have to have all that energy to make the glass to melt the sand. And that's when they started traveling throughout Indiana and Ohio, looking at, at places that had the natural gas. Natural gas was discovered here about 1876. During the natural gas boom, there were about 150 glass companies in this area. Frank Ball got a letter from James Boyce of Muncie saying, come here. He was offered money, land, and, and free natural gas. He got a great deal. Construction on the new Muncie factory began in September of 1887. By 1888, the first glass rolled off the line. Each segment of the family, they were very, very good at developing their own talents and using their own talents appropriately in order to really get the Ball name known. Frank Ball was the company president for 63 years. Edmund was the one who worked with machinery. He understood the machinery, the mechanics. George was very much the leader of the company. Uh, William was an excellent salesman, so he was out traveling around selling these new jars. Ball pulled everything in. So they made the jars, they made the lids, they bought strawboard companies and made their own packing crates. They also started writing the recipes. The Blue Book, the Bible of Canning, was actually developed in the George and Francis Ball House. George and Francis did it in their own kitchen. They developed their own monopoly. <laughs> Even though other companies were still doing this, uh, they pretty much developed their own monopoly. Their diverse business model, as well as numerous inventions like the FC ball machine, helped the company survive as natural gas dwindled. Over the next decade, they acquired glass companies throughout East Central Indiana and across the country. By 1900, they were the largest manufacturer of fruit jars in the world, bringing financial windfall not just to the Ball family, but Muncie as well. The first major gift to the city came in 1917, when the Ball brothers purchased the bankrupt Eastern Indiana Normal University, donating it back to the state and providing financial support as it grew into what it is today, Ball State University. By 1926, the family formed the Ball Brothers Foundation, dedicated to enhancing the quality of life in their Indiana community, starting with the Ball Memorial Hospital. The, the family has always stuck together. They all lived here side by side. And so I'm the oldest now of anybody because nobody else is living older than I am at this point. I'm the, the daughter of William H. Ball, Jr. of the, the five Ball brothers. My grandfather was William H. Ball. They were all very community-minded. They wanted to build the community. They wanted to make economical growth. They were all very concerned about the growth of everything that they could help. All the donations that go out for charities, they all went out of the invested funds that were in the foundation. Both the Ball Family Foundation and the Ball Corporation continued to grow despite the economic challenges of the Great Depression and the devastation of World War II. As the war drew to a close and the next generation of the Ball family, Edmund F. Ball, came into power, the company and its efforts faced an uncertain future. Ed was a visionary and he met these challenges head on. The factory was actually getting worn out. And so at the end of the war up through the, the end of the 40s or so, they had a lot of decisions to make. Would they redo this factory? Would they go out of business? The decision was made, we don't want to sell. This needs to remain Ball Brothers Company. 
but we need to think about what else we can do. They were looking ahead. They were watching Sputnik like everybody else in the early 50s. And they found a, a small company in Denver, Colorado called Control Cells and bought it. And that's how they got into the aerospace industry. But from the time of the early 60s through the most recent flyby of Pluto, every single time the United States has gone into space, Ball has been involved. As the company's involvement in aerospace grew, glass production slowed. By 1962, the Muncie factory had closed. The Ball Corporation headquarters remained in the city until it moved to Colorado in 1998, closing a century-long chapter of Muncie manufacturing, but not of community involvement. 